Hello fellow collectors and other life forms. Uh, for the fourth video in a row, I've done a complete U-turn um, and decided to do something other than I originally planned. Uh, today was going to be a pickups video for June and July, but uh, we're so close to the, the end of August that I thought I'd just wait till August had passed and I'll shoehorn it into a, a three monthly video. Now well, today's uh, subject matter came about by pure accident actually. Um, I'll briefly explain. Those of you who collect will know that um, the biggest enemy of the collector is space. Um, I've got a system where books, videos, uh, sorry, books, Blu-rays, um, magaz uh, small, small, smaller magazines go that way, uh, horizontally, and everything else goes vertically. Stuff like PS3 collector's editions, I mean, I've got them wall to ceiling, literally, uh, in one of my rooms. Um, <clears throat> And all my Destiny stuff is wall to ceiling. Not quite reached the ceiling yet, but we're getting there. Um, and, of course, magazines, they just go upwards. Um, now, the problem with stuff that goes vertically is that if it's, if it's obscured by maybe something else um, in front of it, it's easy to forget what you've got. That sounds daft, but uh, nevertheless true. Um, and I happened to be searching for something the other day, and I was raking around the bottom of the shelf, and I thought, ah, I'd forgotten all about these. Um, and these were my art, comic artist portfolios. Now, these were <clears throat> these were very popular from sort of like the mid '70s through to the early 90s, um, they've fallen out of fashion now, but uh, back then, you know, they were, they were, uh, comic artists weren't paid that much per page, and it was an alternative method for getting some, some of the more popular artists a bit more cash. And as I say, there were, there were quite a few of them um, produced, and um, I got, I got into it, not, not in a big way, um, but I've certainly got enough here to uh, to show it today uh, to make it interesting. So um, yeah, let's get started. Now, the first I'm going to start with the best first actually. Um, okay, this is um, portfolio by Frank Frazetta, um, and it was from like the mid 70s, 75, I believe, from memory. And now, Frank Frazetta is arguably one of the most famous, well, probably the most famous fantasy artist um, in the world. Or was, before his death, unfortunately. Um, and like, like most um, successful artists, he began um, drawing comics and, and doing covers um, with comics. And then he became a, he moved out of comics into the commercial world, did a lot of paperback covers. I mean, if you have, if any of you out there have a collection of, <coughs> excuse me, fantasy uh, paperbacks, I guarantee you'll have at least one Frank Frazetta cover. Um, and he is, you know, quite rightly regarded as, as, as the main man when it comes to uh, painted fantasy art. Um, but way back in 1953, he did um, a series of covers for Famous Funnies magazines, I think it was. It was an EC comic who did the old horror magazines. Um, and, uh, I mean, these are generally regarded as, you know, sort of the pinnacle of, of comic book cover work. And um, all ten of these were produced in this portfolio. Um, now... You will look long and hard to find one of these on eBay. 
I mean, I've I've been looking just to try and find out what the um, what the going weight rate is, and I've never seen one yet. So I don't I don't know if if I would put this in the realms of the rare, which is something I very rarely do. But um, certainly um, it's hard to find, and if you find one, it will cost you a few bob. So yeah, these these were actually printed in different sizes. Um, and these are all um, these are all Buck Rogers uh, character Buck Rogers. Um, as you can see, the the artwork is um, is pretty pretty smart, and he does he does lovely women. Um, I'm just giving you a good look at these because uh, they they bear looking at. I mean, this this work is uh, is fairly outstanding by any standards. And uh, like I say, these are from way back in nineteen. 1953. Um, pull back a bit on that one because we'll show you some of the some of the detail. You know, it, it harks back to the, the Flash Gordon type of space epic. Um, this one is, uh, is is kind of different. You got the, the big rendition of, of Mars there. These these plates were actually black and white, and they were they were actually coloured by Frazetta himself, um, which gives them a kind of a vibrancy that you won't see in 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 many. In fact, many of these portfolios are black and white anyway. But um, yeah, I mean it's just. Epic stuff. And this, this is my particular favourite. I mean, this one is absolutely stunning, in my opinion. As you can see, the, say, the colours are just absolutely lovely. And you know, if you move in on the detail, I mean, all the musculature on that, on Buck Rogers there, and the the, uh, the, the dress on the female, I mean, the, the attention to detail. And the, the super squid there, whatever it is, uh, it's just um, off the scale in my opinion, and many other people's. Um, yeah, I mean, just, uh, just lovely work now. I'm not. Um, I'm not totally convinced that uh, I covered all ten there. Have I? Have I missed one? I'll just check. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Maybe. Maybe I misremembered. Uh, let's have a quick looky. Uh, yeah, sorry, eight or eight original drawings. I thought there was ten, so you have to excuse me on that one. My my memory uh, let me down there, but yeah, I mean, I mean that that's the pinnacle of of, um, of comic artist portfolios. You won't see anything better than that. Probably won't see that one either, but uh, <laughs> you won't see anything better. Um, now this is this is a slightly different type of uh, portfolio. This is actually in the form of a book. Well, as you can see, it's a um, Jack Kirby, King Kirby portfolio. Um, now, I don't, I don't hold Jack Kirby in as high regard as as many comic connoisseurs. Um, this 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 one has is not is not all plates. It has some, um, it has some text as well, but there are a few pages with. With black and white Kirby stuff, as I say, I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not his biggest fan. But, but, having said that, every so often, 
um, I see something that impresses me greatly. And there's a double panel in here. Uh, oh, it's the metal panel here. Now, I, I think this is absolutely superb. Um, and that, that is just, you know, that is just vintage curvy. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, although I'm not its great as fan, I, I acknowledge that that is something else. Um, and there are, as I say, there are some black and white plates in there. This is Captain America. There, there, there's something away about the way he draws um, ordinary people that um, I find a little off, but that's just me. But certainly that, that, that space panel in the middle there is, is absolutely corking. Now, one of my, one of my favourite um, portfolios is um, this by um, an artist called Josh Kirby. Again, he did a lot of um, comic, uh, sorry, paperback covers and, and stuff. Um, Voyager of the Eye Guy. Now, this is a um, kind of thinly veiled piece about the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, the main character is called Jay Zuz, <laughs> which always amuses me. Um, and it's a series of um, colour. Um, I'll just have to open it up here to get the plates out. I'll show you them. Uh, unfortunately, it's got a bit, a bit knocked on the edges, but. Um, Still see it. This is actually um, this is actually a limited edition portfolio of twelve hundred, of which this is number ten ninety six. Um, and um, yeah, I've always been very very enamoured of this um, this particular portfolio. Yeah, he, he has um, he has a style that um, I, I've not seen in in any other in any other artist. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think he might have done some stuff for, for Terry Pratchett's books, Discworld, uh, but I might be I might be swinging in the dark on that one. But I just didn't remember seeing his art. Um, that's the crucifixion. J is uh, that one, the old cross there. Um, um, that's, that's a particularly nice one. You can see each plate has its own little one word title there and that of course is the, the Ascension. Another very nice plate in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, as I say I yeah, I I'm very I'm very fond of this um this particular portfolio. There again, um it's not one um not one that you're going to see on eBay very often, uh, probably because of its um, its limited nature. Uh, and also, I uh, can't imagine anybody wanting to get rid of it, quite frankly. Okay, now, um, these are what I would call the normal portfolios. These are the sort of things that, you know, there were quite a, quite a lot of these done in the 70s, 80s. Uh, this particular one is is the, the Batman by by Marshall Rogers. Now, um, if you if you're not aware, Marshall Rogers did a very famous run um, on Batman in Detective Comics. I think it was um, storylines involving most of his um, his major villains. Um, and this unusually is um, is, is is in colour. Most of them were black and white. Um, where are we? Another way around here. Where I am. 
right, right way around now, yeah. Different, um, different style of, of artwork altogether. These, these are actually quite dark. Um, and this is my favourite, the Joker with his, his fish gun there, which featured in the in the Detective Comics run that he did. Um, I like that one. That's nice. Um, yeah, so that was um, that was Marshall Rogers. That was just an ordinary portfolio. It wasn't a limited edition or anything. Um, as opposed to this one, which I'm going to show you next. Um, there's the uh, the packaging for it, Robin Hood. Now this is by um, Howard Chaikin, who who did a lot of popular characters. Um, Back in the 70s, 80s, um, one I'll show you, Cody Starbuck, but he did a, a long run on a series called American Flag for first comics, which uh, which was very popular. Now this is, um, as you can see, this is a signed and numbered edition. That's um, 482 of 1,000, so yeah, it was quite, um, quite a low a low print run. There, there was a regular edition as well, but... Um, Obviously, the the limited editions were a bit more expensive. I wouldn't say wouldn't say by any stretch of the imagination that this was um, this was his best his best work, but. Um, was interesting for the for the subject matter. Um, so obviously, um, his marriage to Lady Marion. From that, I would imagine is the. The final scene, as we saw in the Sean Connery version of uh, Robin and Marion, who fires the bow out the window. Yeah, as I say, not um, not his best work, but it's the say it's a it's a sign limited copy, so well worth having. Um, I mean, you, you can you can buy these um, on eBay, and they're, they're they're not they're not outrageous prices. Obviously, the the limited ones are going to cost you a bit more, but I think you can buy the normal, the normal ones around about 10, uh, 12, 15 quid, which is yeah, very reasonable uh, compared with what they cost at the time. And uh, the sign numbered, well, obviously, you know, they might be 25 quid or so. Um, now, this was um, the character I mentioned here just now by Howard Chaik in Cody Starbuck. Um, this one is just an ordinary edition, and it's um, it's uh, signed and signed and numbered. Sorry, it's uh, just an ordinary edition. It's not signed and numbered, but it's in colour. That's what I'm trying to say. Bit of a bit of a dark. These have a bit of a dark palette for some reason. Um, I like that one. It's my favourite out of the. It's only it's only a five, it's only four in the in the set in the portfolio. And then we have that one. And then he did um he did a black and white. Uh, this is this is signed and limited. Um, bit uh, bit disappointed in this one because, as I say, it's not exactly uh, not exactly his best 
work by any means, but um, this one, uh, this one is number five twenty three of of one thousand, signed by him. Um, I find these. I find these to be sorry about my hands in the way. I find these to be a bit minimalistic, if anything. As if he just thought, oh, I'll just knock these out in a day and uh, run with the money, but. Right, there are six plates in this one, so it's a bit um, better value. That one's quite nice. That one is um, what I would call nondescript, to be honest. I don't know what's all that about. There's no, no Cody, Cody Starbuck there. And no there. I don't remember the series too much. I presume that's one of the villains. But yeah, that was so. That was a six issue jobby, six uh, plate jobby that he did. Um, right now, these um, these next five I'm going to show you are all Tim and Joe Vigil. Um, they produced a comic in the what would it be in the eighties called Faust. Uh, very much adults only, <laughs> but very popular. Um, now, unfortunately, I can only show you some of these because um, most of them are not fit for family viewing and I don't want to get kicked off YouTube for showing uh, pornographic or naked women or anything like that. So, I mean, that one's okay. No nudies, nudism in that one, but um, I'm afraid the other... How many's in there? Yeah, the other five in there are all rather rude, for want of a better term. Um, same with these. Now, he did a series of covers from the first um, book. Uh, that's set one. And here again, unfortunately, I can only show you one that's fit for consumption it's a shame because uh, some of the others are very are very very nice but like I say I don't want to be get booted off for showing uh, nudism or too much violence um, I suppose that one's alright everybody's got their gear on that's the next one and once again I can only show you that which nevertheless is it's quite nice the rest will have to go Four, four plates in each of these. And it looks like there's only about one in each I can reasonably show you, but you get uh, you get the idea. I'll find the end of that one. Yeah, set three, and then finally. Set four. There is actually a very expensive lenticular version of that I saw online, but way out of my uh, price range, sadly. There we have. Again, I can only show you that one. There seems to be one in every set that's uh, fit for family consumption. 
So that was those. Um, yeah, now this next few I'm going to show you, I actually bought these for a couple of quid each uh, in a bookshop in Newcastle near where I live. Um, there were quite a few of them and I just picked out the best. That was the uh, the Temptress by a um, Spanish artist called Esteban Moroto. Now, Esteban Moroto did a lot of work for the Warren magazine, you know, Creepy Eerie, all of that stuff. Um, I'll just give you a quick run through. These are all, uh, these are all okay to, to view. A lot of the Spanish artists were very, 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 very talented. Um, although some of them were quite similar to each other. Very samey. I'll say for a set of six colour uh, plates for a couple of quid, you know, you can't complain. And they are quite... They are quite nice, I have to say. The brooding castle in the background there. Next few I can only show you one example also. This is um, Bloodlust Setsu by Jim Ballant. That's the only one I can show you that's a fit. Um, Jim Ballant did, um, did some Batman stuff for DC but he also has his own his own independent comic and for the life of me I can't I can't remember, it's something rose, but I, I just can't remember. And this is by, this is by this one's by an artist I've never heard of, Kevin Michael Russell, R-A-S-E-L, Demon Lust it's called. And unfortunately that's the only one, that's the only one I can, uh, can show you. Quite nice, good, detailed. Is that one? And then there again, you'll recognise this straight away probably. That's um, Slonya, Slain, Slain, Slonya, however they pronounce it, the 2000 AD character from Simon Bisley. Um, that is, yeah, just a home guard portfolio, $25. So, you know, for a couple of quid, I think I did all right there. So that's those. Then finally, on the portfolio front, um, this is a real nice one. It's a hardback. Um, spirit. It's the Spirit Portfolio by by Will Eisner. Um, now this is sign and number also, and if you wish to buy one, it'll cost you three figures. Um, Typically about 120 quid, I think, is the going rate. Um, I'm just, it's got a very nice, uh, you can tell it's a, a class item, by the way it's, um, the way it's packaged there, you know, it's got the little, little blue holders in there and it's got a little sketch drawing on the cover. Um, I'll just plates out for you. Now I think there's ten plates in this one and there's actually ten plates but there's a bonus plate at the end. Um, and these were latterly used for the Warren. That's just a little um Blurb about it. Um, these were latterly used as covers for the uh, run of the spirit that, that Warren did 
Um, so that's the first one. This is signed by Will Eisner, 1411 out of 1500 limited. So, I'll say there's, there's 10 plates here. That's a bonus one. Now, like we get one of the legendary um, figures in in fantasy and comic books. Did a lot of newspaper strips um, in the forties and fifties, and then became associated with his character, the spirit, and became very successful. Um, I have a question about that one. How the heck did the winner get down? I have a long drop on top of that tower. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be up there. Uh, and so I'm missing. I'm stuck together those two. Uh, that's the next one. Oops, got you the wrong one. <laughs> I've seen that one, haven't we? Um, yeah, I, I like that one. The Will Eisner does great. So sort of like rain soaked characters uh, and his rain's great. I love I love all of these his rainy stuff, the way the rain plops off their their coats. Um convention. I wanna be at that one. Alright, so then we have Oh, actually. These, these are all on very um, high quality paper, by the way. Um, cardboard, I should say, not paper. Um, I remember that being a double, a double spread uh, on one of the hardbacks. They did it wrapped around the hardback cover. Um, nice indeed. And this was the, this was the bonus um, plate that came with, with some sketches for some of the plates that you saw in there. Very nice. Uh, that was that. So that um, that basically is all of the portfolios I have to show you. But while I was down there, um, just very briefly, I found these. Now these are two original paintings that were, that were gifted to me by a, a northeast artist called Ben Crozier. Um, and I must get them framed sometime. But one of my favourite characters of all time is the Shadow. Ben knew that and he provided me with uh, these free gratis for which I was very grateful. It's a really nice one and that one, Marco lay in the shadow in the same motor I think. Yes, these were lurking down as I say with all the portfolios because of their size. So there you have it uh, ladies and gentlemen, something probably new to you, something a bit niche, you know, I probably won't get as many views as normal but you know my job's to shine light in the dark corners and dusty corners of collecting so there you have it. Um, next time we will be doing um, a pickups video for June, July, August uh, and after that who knows. So. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me. Keep the subscriptions rolling in. We're creeping towards 1500. Um, and I thank you once again. Bye-bye now. <laughs>